Hello, Keller ISD. Rick Westfall here, giving you an update on what's happening inside of our school district. Wanted to uh, quickly, before we get into that, remind everyone that we do have a website up and running, uh, www.kellerisd.net backslash coronavirus, that has a lot of answers to some frequently asked questions. I'm not suggesting that it's exhaustive and it, by any means, but we do have a lot of things there. Um, so while we're doing these videos, sometimes it's uh, pretty easy just to go ahead and start typing in questions down below. But before you do that, I would like you to first go to the website and check that out uh, because you might actually get a, an answer to your question faster there uh, than waiting on our social media team to be able to get back to you through this uh, comment thread below or the rest of this video might actually provide you some answers. Um, so, so before we start commenting below on the video, just uh, do, do a little homework on our website or wait for the rest of this video. And if we still have an answer to questions, certainly ask, ask us the question here. Uh, first things first, um, we have extended our closure through April the 17th. I want to make sure people understand why. Um, our our uh, Tarrant County order uh, actually expires on April the 7th. City of Fort Worth order expires on April the 7th. Um, but we as a school district and school districts all around us are going to need time to uh, ramp back up for school as, as we have are used to having it actually on our campuses. There are things that you just can't op swing the doors back open and everything work uh, perfectly. So um, collectively, Tarrant County Schools have decided that if we, if we push to uh, or through the 17th, uh, meaning that we would open up on April the 20th, um, that would give us time between the, uh, the expiration of the order uh, and when we would open up schools uh, to get things up and running and everything good, food service, technology, all, all those different pieces. Um, now, uh, here's the other piece I want to make sure you understand. Just because we've pushed our closure through the 17th doesn't mean that's a hard and fast rule and we're going to hit that no matter what. If we are continuing, if we're continued to give recommendations on a number of people that should be collecting in one area, um, being limited, then obviously we will continue to have to extend our closure. We're just letting you know as a community that that's our current thinking is that if if all goes well and if our trending data that we're being given by the health department is going the way we want it to go, uh, if they're recommending schools reopen, um, then that's our target point is, is through the 17th. So our target would be actually opening up on April 20th, which again gives us plenty of time to get, to get ready to go. Um, but I want to assure people because I know I've, I've got a lot of questions about um, when is it safe to reopen, when is it not safe to reopen. Um, and, and I want you to know that if we're ever given advice, even along this new deadline, to not reopen, then we will just continue to extend the dates. Um, I, I want to, um, to that point, I, there, there are lots of things that are starting to go on, a lot of questions we're starting to get, obviously, um, from, from members of our high school uh, student body, especially seniors. Uh, questions of prom and, and graduation. So I want to speak first to graduation, and I want to go ahead and take this off of your plate. We will be graduating your kids. Seniors will be, will graduate. We will graduate. We will use. We will be in some form of a ceremony. Um, if if the large gathering um, restriction is gone by May the twenty third, then we're going to graduate on May the twenty third, just like it shows up on the calendar um, at Dickey's Arena. Um, however, if that uh, is still enforced, if if we're not allowed to have a large gathering of people, then obviously we can't uh, have that on May the twenty third. But um, my, uh, my team has worked on some uh, alternate dates at the same venue, but some alternate dates in the summer. So, so whether it's on May 23rd at Dickey's Arena um, or it's later into the summer, we will make sure we give our students an opportunity to have uh, their graduation ceremony. Um, if it's into the summer, obviously it won't be perfect. We're going to be on top of something, someone's vacation. Uh, there'll, there'll be different things that, that conflict with it. Um, but we'll do the very best we can to try to give uh, our seniors the experience that, that they have very, very richly deserved um, and earned uh, on, on this uh, weird year that we're in right now. Um, related to prom, that's another big event. Um, prom it hasn't been canceled by any stretch, but I will again say that if we're under any kind of a restriction for large gatherings, then obviously we can't have prom. Um, so what we've done is we're going to start working with our high school principals and they're going to start making uh, some, some potential plan Bs. I'm not going to promise there's going to be a plan B for prom, uh, but what I will say is that we're going to work on it and see if that is an option for, for that. You have to keep in mind that there are only a certain number of venues and events um, that sometimes people will do for prom if you're trying to go outside of the school itself to give that experience. 
and every all the schools all around us are going to be clamoring for those different opportunities. So just just be aware that we will be working on the potential for a plan B, but for prom, I can't promise a plan B yet. So just putting that out there. So let's talk about grading. We actually have a couple things to address in this particular topic. Uh, one is the finishing up of the third nine weeks, and the other one is how we're managing the fourth nine weeks. So first, the third nine weeks, uh, we are finishing that up actually effective March the 30th. Uh, the third nine weeks actually ended before spring break, but um, we had students needing to make up some work or get work turned in or teachers uh, getting to some work that needed to be graded that might have been left up at the campuses. So we provided a little bit of time to get that finished out. So the deadline to get everything in is March the 30th, which is next uh, Monday. And then you can expect to see report cards for the third nine weeks uh, sometime next week, more than likely no later than, than Friday, April the 3rd. So that's that part that finishes up the third nine weeks. The fourth nine, re fourth nine weeks is obviously a little trickier. Um, we have been uh, working through different scenarios. We've been talking to districts all around us about how are we going to manage grading for the fourth nine weeks in this new world of, of e-learning. Uh, and where we've landed is that we will end up doing a pass-fail system just for the fourth nine weeks. And how that looks, how that's calculated, what are all the details behind it, um, it would take way too long to explain in this video. And frankly, you need to have that documentation in front of you so you can read through it and look through it and verify some things. So we are currently modeling a couple different ways of thinking about this and working on this and plan on pushing that out to our community sometime next week, mid, late next week, maybe earlier. But I want to be sure that we get it right before we push it to you. So for sure, the fourth nine weeks will be a pass fail. All the ripple effects, the ripple effects to GPA, the ripple effects to class rank, the ripple effects to course credit, all of those things, we still need to spend time making sure we get it as right as we can uh, for our students, knowing that um, this is just such an unusual situation. We're basically, again, creating a system just very fast and in the moment, and hopefully we'll never have to use it again. And um, I do want to make one note, though, when it comes to GPA, and if you don't know this, then this is a good time for me to, to educate on that, is that for seniors, at the end of the third nine weeks, everything was locked anyway. So class rank was locked. Anything in terms of graduation or graduation honors, um, the calculations stop after the third nine weeks. So that's all done once we finalize our third nine week grading period. What I'm talking about is that, yes, we, we will all still have a pass fail for our kids, but how does that then impact um, kids who are taking high school level courses who are not seniors? So again, those, that's the modeling we're doing. And once we get it figured out, we will push it to you and make sure you've got all the details. I wanna make sure I'm moving through the rest of the topics that I wanna talk about. Um, so, you know, and once we kind of experimented or pushed into this e-learning platform, uh, there's been a lot of stuff out there, a lot of support mechanisms, but I also know it's been very overwhelming for a lot of people. Uh, for a lot of different reasons, um, and, and those reasons are, are, are varied and, and across the entire community. But before I get into what we're doing to, to solve some of those issues, um, I want to thank our parents and our, and, and our kiddos for, for being patient with us. Um, it is uh, a process that we are working and figuring out, that our teachers are working and figuring out um, how to best get you the information you need so that there's not a, um, a, a gap in academic learning before we get to the summer. Um, but, but I just, so, so thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for feedback that we've received, uh, that allows us to, to, to tweak and, and maneuver through this. But I hope that what I'm getting ready to tell you, um, allows, allows the majority, if not all of you to, to breathe and know that we're working on this together and that we're uh, working on best plans for you. Um, but here's how, how it worked. Um, what we've done is create a, a system wide plan, uh, that will streamline the communication. Um, it'll streamline our emails. It'll streamline our delivery of digital content. Um, so what you can expect uh, is, again, kind of like on the, uh, the course grading document that you're going to get. You're also going to get a, a document that explains our, our e-learning process moving forward. Um, but I can quickly tell you um, that what, you're, what you'll get is a uh, on Sundays, you're going to get essentially a week at a glance from everybody. Um, and that way you at home, parents, students can look at everything that they know they, they've got to deal with in that week and then map that out accordingly along with a little bit of, there'll be a schedule that teachers are going to still be working with you. They'll still be getting online. They'll still be recording videos to push out throughout the course of the week, but you're not going to get, hopefully 
if this goes well, won't keep getting pinged by multiple, multiple, multiple emails all through the week. You're going to get your assignments at the beginning of the week, and then you can craft your plan that works best for you um, to be able to get whatever it is, whatever learning you're trying to accomplish for the rest of that week. And then next Sunday, it just starts again. So as long as we're closed, every Sunday, you'll get your week at a glance, and then you can plan accordingly. Um, I went over that really fast, and there's some more detail inside of this document that you're going to get, but that document will come out this weekend, um, and you'll be able to hopefully um, get a better idea of what we're trying to accomplish for your sake and, and, and frankly, your sanity, um, not only for parents and students, but for staff as well, because it's going to help them um, manage when to push stuff out also, which I'm, I'm hoping uh, will will help them. They've got a lot of things that they're doing. We've got a lot of moms and dads that are still trying to be moms and dads, and they're doing their own teaching as well with with teaching other kids. So uh, collectively, we're, we're working on this. I know that as a community, we're working on this together. I, I, I can't begin to uh, express to you my, my thankfulness for this community. Um, you have been uh, super supportive, super patient, um, and, and we are, again, as I've said before, the airplane was well in the air uh, that we're still building together, but we're building it and we're, and we're making some, some really good solid adjustments that I believe are going to be helpful to our students. Uh, hopefully this won't last a lot longer, um, but I think we're putting some pieces in place that if it does, if, even if it have, have to go, we have to go past the April 17th closure, I think we're, we're putting in some pieces um, that will support our, our long-term learning uh, so that, again, we don't have a big academic gap when we come back in, in August. So um, I just, again, want to summarize by, by saying, uh, talking about the closure, the closure is going to go now through April the 17th. Uh, talked a little bit about our, our way we're calculating GPA and, and how we're managing grades. You're going to get a document on that. So um, if you've still got questions after that piece, certainly reach out uh, to your principal and you can ask some questions there. You're going to get a document on e-learning uh, and, and how we're going to communicate and how we're going to roll assignments out to you. So again, after you get that document, um, if you still have questions, reach out to your teachers or principal. Um, and um, that's it for now. And that's the work that we've been doing to try to help make this seem a little bit more normal. So um, take care. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of today and weekend. And if you're watching this, you know, like on Sunday, then I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, but we'll keep plugging in and we'll keep um, informing the community on what we're doing and, and, and updates to what's happening here in Keller ISD. Have a great day.